Nick Rutter here from McKee 37. What I have in front of me is a classic Jeep Wrangler that has been washed in quite some time. Like all Jeep Wranglers, it's convertible because you can take the, the vinyl top off. And traditionally, you wouldn't wash a vehicle like this with a hose and water because you're going to get the interior wet. So what I'm going to do is perform a rinseless wash using McKee 37 N914. Now a rinseless wash is when you have a bucket, like your traditional wash, but you don't have a hose and you're not rinsing the vehicle down before or after you wash it. What you do is you add two capfuls of this to a bucket of water, you dunk your wash media in, you wash a panel, and then you dry a panel. And you continue this method around the entire vehicle until it's clean. Now it may sound odd to those of you that have never done it, but it's actually a very safe way to wash your vehicle while conserving water, saving time, and of course when you're working on a unique vehicle like this when you have no other choice. Plus, my favorite feature is that you can perform a rinseless wash in your garage when it's dark outside. Pull the vehicle inside, turn your garage lights on, boom, you can wash your car in the comfort of your garage at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. I love it. Now N914 is one of the most versatile, versatile products available because you can also dilute it as a waterless wash. Now a waterless wash is when you spray and you wipe. There's no bucket and there's no water involved. A rinseless wash is a better choice for a vehicle that has a thicker film of dirt. A waterless wash is good for a daily driver if you stay on top of it. You know, you can clean it every couple days. A rinseless wash, heavier dirt. A waterless wash, lighter dirt. I'm going to show you how N914 works on this Jeep. Now with the rinseless wash, you want to use two buckets. One for your wash solution and one for your rinse water. Both of these buckets are clear. They have a measurement on the side so you know exactly how much water to put in there. They have a gamma seal lid and they also have a grit guard. And what a grit guard does is it traps the dirt particles that you remove from your wash media. That way it doesn't swirl back up in your water back into your wash bed. Now using N914 is real simple. It's one ounce of concentrate for every two gallons of water. I have three and a half gallons in this wash bucket. I'm going to use the glug glug method. That's about two ounces what I need for this much solution. Then you can either use a wash mitt like this alien worm wash mitt or you can use microfiber towels. For a vehicle that's not so dirty you can get away with using just one of these. For this Jeep, I'm going to use a handful of these premium gold towels. And I'm only going to use them so many times before I discard them for this application. Now using the rinseless wash is really simple. You wash a panel, and after you wash it, you dunk it in your rinse water, you wring it out, and you put it back in here. Super easy. This Jeep is pretty dirty. So one trick that detailers use to, for an extra precautionary measure is to spray it down with waterless wash first. So this is N914, mix it the waterless wash dilution ratio, one ounce of water for every gallon, excuse me, one ounce of concentrate for every gallon of water. This is the 32 ounce spray bottle, which means I have a quarter ounce of concentrate and the rest is water. And by spraying it down first, it gives the cleaner time to loosen any dirt and grit particles. That way, when you take your towel or your wash mitt, which is soaked with the rinseless wash solution, less likely to scratch. You just wipe one direction, look at your towel. A towel has eight usable sides when you fold it four ways. Flip it. That section right there. Expose the clean section. Again, and keep doing this until you no longer have any clean sections. Now in the real world, I'd wash this entire hood before drying it. But this is not the real world, it's a video. I'm going to dry it. You want to use a microfiber towel that's a manageable size, that way you don't drag it across the ground or panels that have not been washed yet. And you simply dry it. 
I'm going to finish the entire panel. This is the microfiber towel I just used to wash the hood of the Jeep. Now earlier I said you have two buckets, one for your wash solution and the other for your rinse water. This is a safety measure to prevent swirls and scratches. So you take your wash media, you dunk it in the rinse water, and you agitate it against the, against the grit guard insert. And what that does is it removes the dirt and the grime from the towel, and the grit guard insert traps it in the bottom of the bucket. Take your towel, wring it out really well. It's never a bad idea to inspect it. Make sure you don't have any big chunks of sand or anything like that before you put it back in your wash bucket. Now as you make your way around the vehicle, when a towel becomes too saturated and you can't get it as clean as you'd like, then switch to a new towel. I have three towels in this bucket. If the vehicle is lightly soiled, you can get away with using just one wash mitt. A rinseless wash is really simple. You wash one panel, you dry it, and you move on. Doing the wheels and tires, it's best if you use a waterless wash. N914 diluted 1 to 128. Simply spray and wipe. That's the easiest way to wash your vehicle without resorting to a hose and sudsy solution and runoff. If you live in an apartment complex, it's perfect. You want to wash your vehicle at night in your garage, it's perfect. At a car show, it is hands down the most convenient way to wash your vehicle without sacrificing any safety. McKee 37 N914 is one of the most versatile detailing products you'll ever use. I showed you how to use it as a rinseless wash. Now you can also use it as a dedicated waterless wash. Now this Jeep is a little out of my comfort zone in terms of how dirty it is to normally use a waterless wash, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show it anyway. A waterless wash, you dilute it one ounce of concentrate to a gallon of water. This is the 32 ounce spray bottle, so that means it just takes a quarter ounce of that hyper-concentrated liquid to make a full spray bottle of ready to use waterless wash. When using a waterless wash, you wanna have lots of microfiber towels, high quality ones. And you wanna spray a, a heavy film of product. You wanna apply it really wet. And the reason you wanna do that is lots of lubrication. Normally when you use a spray wax, you just do one or two sprays. But for a waterless wash, you really wanna have a thick layer a cleaner on there. An N914 contains super slippery polymers that encapsulate the dirt. That way when you wipe it off, it gets trapped in the pile of the towel, therefore it doesn't scratch your paint. Spray it down, take a towel, and you wipe in one direction. This is not something you do in a circular motion because you'll scratch the paint. That towel is very dirty. I'm going to flip to a clean side because your towel has eight usable sides. Do that section, it's dirty. Flip it over again, expose the clean section. Now you can see why I mentioned having plenty of microfiber towels. Another uh, section of dirt removed, flip it over. And normally you want to save the, the lower body panels last because they tend to be the dirtiest. And that's it. A waterless wash is that simple. One of the many benefits of N914 is that it doesn't streak, it doesn't smear, it does not have any wax or silicones. Uh, those are two things you do not want in a waterless wash because they make the surface grabby. If the surface is grabby, then you're going to scratch the paint as you wipe the towel. Just a couple swipes and this paint is clean. We're going to polish this Jeep. It's going to be an awesome project we're going to do. Stay tuned for more. And coming up next, I'll show you N914 as a clay lubricant. By now you know N914 has a lot of uses. Another one of them is a clay lubricant. Dilute it one ounce of concentrate to a gallon of water, and you'll have a ready-to-use clay bar lubricant. We've already washed the hood of this Jeep. Half of it using the rinseless wash solution half of it using waterless. Now the waterless dilution and the clay lube dilution is exactly the same, so I'm using the same spray bottle. If you're not familiar with the clay bar, what this does is it removes above surface contaminants and makes the paint smooth. Gloss comes from smoothness. This paint, it's really loud. Paint shouldn't make noise. This Jeep sits outside, it's about 30 years old. 
there's a lot of bonded contaminants that a polish or a wax will not remove. By removing the contaminants with the clay bar, you create a smoother surface so your wax or polish will stick better and the end result is better gloss and superior longevity from your wax or sealant. How this works is there's a abrasive in here. This is a synthetic resin and you spray the lubricant on, you rip the bar back and forth and it essentially shaves off the contaminants and then it sticks in the bar. After you do a section, you re it, exposing a clean area and you move forward. Take some lubricant, spray it on. You want to hold the bar right there. What you don't want to do is put it against the tip of your fingers because as you rub it, your fingers will make the way through the bar. And there's really no science to using a clay bar. You just want to rub it back and forth really fast. It's not something you're going to do real slow. It should only take you about 20 or 30 minutes to clay an entire full-size vehicle. And this is one of the most rewarding aspects of car care because there's a huge visual difference before and after, both with the way the paint looks and your clay bar because the clay picks up lots of embedded dirt and contaminants. After you clay a section, take a microfiber towel, wipe off the residue, then you move on to the next section and you follow with polishing or waxing or whatever your end goal is. That's McKee's 37 N914 at the clay lube dilution ratio. Now the last and final use for N914 at least what's on the label, is to use as a paint prep. And when I say paint prep, I mean as a spray-on, wipe-off solution to remove polishing oils prior to putting on a Key 37 paint coating. This is a nano glass ceramic paint coating that fills in all the pits, pores, and valleys of the paint, creating a perfectly smooth surface that lasts up to two years. It's extremely glossy, extremely slick, and very easy to use. However, prep is key. So after you wash and clay the vehicle, you're going to polish it to remove swirl marks. And then in between the polishing and the coating process, you're going to use N914 diluted one ounce of concentrate to eight ounces of water. And that's going to effectively strip the polishing oils without inducing scratches. In the past, people have always used isopropyl alcohol or IPA. It's a very strong um, solution it'll cause what they call um, uh, swelling of the paint. It's a very high octane solvent. N914 is not like that. IPA is also a very poor lubricant. So after you spend hours or even days removing swirl marks, if you wipe it down with something that's really grabby, you're going to be inducing marring and swirls back into the paint. So N914 has lubricity. You spray it on, you wipe, takes the polishing oils off, you won't scratch the paint. So N914 has a lot of uses, including interior cleaner, rinseless wash, waterless wash, clay lubricant. A lot of guys use it to clean their buffing pads. You can use, use it at 1 to 32, meaning one part concentrate, 32 parts water. As a wheel cleaner, as a tire cleaner, you can use it to clean engines that are in pretty decent shape overall. It's a phenomenal product. It, it contains a highly advanced surfactant. That's what makes it all possible doesn't leave any residue behind. It's not going to alter the gloss or the water beading of your paint. It's just going to enhance the existing wax sealant or coating. That's McKee's 37 N914. Visit McKee's37.com for more information.